Welcome to Taco Comedy at Taco Bayou. Anybody alive out there? Come on, we got plenty of uh, plenty of seats out here. Now uh, our, uh, our host today is uh, Sexy Time Will Scott. Yay! But before this, I'm going to tell you the um, the rules for uh, Taco Comedy. First rule is new folks, three to five minutes. I uh, will flash you if, you if you go over your time. Second rule is amending the first rules called the killing rule. If you're killing, keep going. I'm not going to pull anybody off while they're getting laughs. All right? And then the third rule is no yiffing. I'm, not, I'm uh, absolutely uh, solid on that. Fourth rule, well, Everybody knows me as I don't like a lot of potty mouth, a lot of uh, risque humor, any uh, LGBT humor, any uh, whatever, but being in America, say what the fuck you want as long as it's funny. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're going to start as soon as Sexy Time Will Scott gets up to the microphone. Sexy Time Will Scott! Will, where are you, man? He's probably playing his... <laughs> All right, so um, there's this one last one. Yeah, bear with me. The Bill Cosby. The Bill Cosby. That's when you're a civil rights legend. You uh, have sex with your good lady wife. Five lovely children. Put them all through college while telling humorous anecdotes about your childhood. The Bill Cosby. It's not crapping on a prostitute in a tub full of pudding. That's not Bill Cosby. That's not Dr. Cosby. It's not choke fucking Lisa Bonet till she throws up fruity pebbles on your sweater. That's not Bill Cosby. That's not Dr. Cosby. It's not a three way with Dio and Rudy on that giant mound of the frosty pudding pots. That's not Bill Cosby. That's not Dr. Cosby. <laughs> Well, I have a I have a confession confession for everybody. I've just recently become a woman. You, you should have known from these bitch tits here. I was suspecting I was becoming a woman myself. Now I don't have a lot, but like the other day, had my first period. I had my first period. I'm, I'm ready to give life. Now I don't have a lot of uh, female role models. Maybe you can help me out. A uh, period, that's when you uh, bleed where you pee. Because that's totally what's happening to me. <laughs> it's the miracle of life. Okay, so you might have noticed that my comedy is a bit on the raw side. That's because I'm a time traveler from the future. Zarkon! Time comic! I come from the future with jokes. Because we all know that obscenity moves over time. I mean, in the Victorian era, they wouldn't even show chair legs. They'd put little doilies on them. And now, you can say pretty much everything. But in the future, 4012, it's not enough to make a joke about skull fucking an albino midget transvestite. You have to actually skull fuck on stage. And let me tell you, 4012, it killed. It killed. Well, it killed the midget anyway, because evidently his eye pussy is only two inches deep, and his brain's behind that. Live and learn, live and learn. But anyway, so I, I, I got most of my jokes that I told this evening out of a children's party book from uh, 3052 for children entertainers. And uh, so it's like, Daddy, the nice man made a golden shower joke, but he didn't pee on anybody. Not to your 12, Billy. <laughs> Alright, so, like, I set my time pod to uh, 2012, and uh, I noticed that 20 years ago, airline food, hilarious, hilarious, airline food is hilarious. 20 years from now, food comedy comes back. Yeah. Would you like me to tell you a joke from uh, 2042? Yes. All right, all right, all right. So I was dumpster diving for my dinner behind in the dumpster behind the gated community. Found some beautiful two-day-old pizza when the private police officer maced me and pulled me out of the dumpster and kicked me and punched me and tasered me. 
And he was like, you asshole! We were going to sell that to the elementary school. Now that we've maced you in there, we have to label it spicy. <laughs> you might not think that's funny. I don't know, but it killed at the detention center. <laughs> okay, so who, uh, I heard that today, confessional comedy, confessional comedy, but who here is a time traveler has his own time machine? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, we got one, one time traveler. All right, so you'll know, right? Three things you do when you first get a time machine. First, you jump back in time, shoot your father in the face before you were born. Causality is your bitch. <laughs> now, I, it, it says not to do it in the time machine manual, but everybody does it. Everybody does it. They, and it's, a, it's the first thing, or last thing, I'm not quite sure how that works, that, that everybody does. Second thing you do, Jump in your time machine, go back and meet Jesus. Go back and meet Jesus. Um, but I was kind of disappointed about the whole meeting Jesus thing. Because, like, now there's time travel, there's an infinite number of dimensions, infinite number of time travelers, and an infinitely long line to meet Jesus with the time machines. So I get in the infinite line, wait an infinite period of time, and there I get to meet Jesus. And you know, Jesus, kind of a dick. Kind of a dick. Well, I slapped him. And he's going, ow! You're supposed to turn the other cheek. And I took his coat and he wouldn't give me his cloak. He's just like, man, you're not doing any of your greatest hits. I go see the stones. I want to see something the Hill. I slap Jesus. I'm going to see him turn the other cheek. Jesus, kind of a dick. Oh, and another thing is, Jesus, total homophobe. Total homophobe. That's all. Faggots going to hell this and faggots going to hell that. Evidently, Westboro Baptist Church had it all right. Had it all right. Good thing there was nobody around writing down what he was saying. But uh, I knew what was going on. This guy hanging out with 12 dudes and a fag hag. Just saying. Jesus, first self-hating homophobic preacher. Third thing you do when you get your time machines kill Hitler. So I went back, and it's just the same as Jesus. It's an infinite line of people that killed you. You can't just point your pan galactic gargle blaster Hitler and go, drink justice, fool. No, no. And after my disappointment with Jesus, I was like, I'm just going to skip this one. I'm just going to skip this one. So, and Jesus, or Hitler rather, not even my favorite World War II uh, personality. My favorite one was Anne Frank. I saw her speak at time school. Um, she was saying how she had to hide her entire childhood in the attic, and then after she got out of the attic, she got elected the head of the UN, and how she solved the Cold War and ended the Palestinian crisis. So I just had to meet this girl. So I popped to uh, Amsterdam, the Frank House, and uh, no line, fast pass, bitches! <laughs> right up to the front, all right? So I'm in there, and I remember like, how sad she was. She missed out. I told her, I got my time machine here, and you know, we're going we're gonna to have, we're going to rock. We're going to have some fun. And boy, her little eyes lit up when I gave her her present. A trunk kit. Oh, and she was good, too. She was doing paradiddles. She had some skills, man. She was just like going, I, I tell you, Ann, I tell you, we're going to have uh, a, uh, I'm going to get a three-girl, all-Jewish hot girl band. With you as drummer, I'll go in my time machine. I'll go find two other two other girls, a bassist and a singer. Probably, hopefully they sing. That'd be nice. A bassist guitar player. And we were spitballing some ideas of uh, names for the band: Slow Train East, the Zyklon B3, the Swinging Ovens, or my favorite, Joy Division. Now I know there is a was a Joy Division. I'm still not sure how that goes. But if I had my three girl, all, uh, all uh, girl Jewish uh, hot uh, R&B trio, Joy Division would be riding my nuts. Just saying, time machine, bitches! All right, so like, I, sh I left to go get the other girls, and then, what do you know, noise complaint. And when I get a noise complaint, they're just like, turn it down. But evidently, the Nazis totally overreact with the noise complaint. Evidently, first offense, death train. So the time police, they got me in, uh, they got me arrested, and they took away my time machine, and they exiled me here to Georgia 2012. Something about ultimate punishment. Hell, it's warm, and they got drinks. I'm down with this. This is great.
But, you know, they said, well, you know, this is halfway towards America's abandonment of the public schools. It's uh, only, only rich people can afford health care. And there's a private police force that has bounties for the arrest and filling the, the prisons up with poor people, taking a larger sl Oh, wait. That's next year. Spoiler alert! Romney 2012, bitches! <laughs> happy Christmas! <laughs> Christmas? More like happy <laughs> Dixmas. I just got turned over to the next guy, Chris Davison. Come on.